Welcome to the U.S. Azure Partner Community video blog series. As a part of our broader community efforts here in the U.S. for our Azure partners, we on the national PTS team are going to be sharing with you some short video blogs every month. And these video blogs are based on the real-world conversations that we're having with partners every day. We want to take some of the best practices that we're learning about or challenges that we're helping partners work through and share them with you. So my name is Nick Johnson and today I want to talk about how to maximize your Azure credits. One of the questions I get on a regular basis from partners who have access to Azure in some way is how do I maximize my credits? They seem to run out before I'm done using them every month and I want to make them go further. So what I want to do today is show you three or four simple little things that will impact how quickly those credits are consumed and I think if you're aware of those you should be able to work with those in a, in a much more efficient way. So I'm logged in here to the original Azure portal. In this portal I want you to be aware of a few things that can come into play especially when you're creating virtual machines which will impact how many credits you you go through every day or every hour. I'm going to click on the new button down in the lower left hand corner and then I'm going to choose compute virtual machine and from gallery. Now in the gallery, the first thing you'll do is choose an image. Be aware that the image you choose will impact the cost every hour to run that. In this example, I'm just going to choose Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center, and then I'm going to click on the next arrow. After entering the virtual machine name, then I will choose what tier of machine this will be. It will be either be a basic or a standard, and then the size. And be aware that both of these can impact the hourly cost. After I choose the tier and size, I'm just going to enter a, a username and a password. And then I'll go ahead and click to the next screen. On this screen, I'm going to choose if I want to use an existing cloud service or create a new one. After I choose my region, then I'll pick my storage account. I'll just let it create one for me in this case. I could choose to put this in an availability set. In this case, I'm not because this is just a test machine. I don't plan to keep it running for very long. I don't need high availability. After I click Next, I can choose to install the VM agent and any of the additional options that are shown on the screen and click OK. So that's going to go ahead and create that VM for me. And while it's doing that, let me show you the Azure pricing calculator, which impacts some of those options that we saw in the setup wizard. To access the pricing calculator, up on the top toolbar, just click this arrow and then choose pricing. So once you're in the pricing calculator, click on the virtual machines tab and what you'll see on this screen is an expanded out list of what we saw in that virtual machine creation wizard. So for example, you'll see here the option to choose whether it's a basic or a standard virtual machine. Then it will show you the different series that are available. And what you can do is operate the slider bar to indicate the number of virtual machines that you're going to run. You can choose the configuration, for example, D1, D2, D3. That increases the number of cores and available memory on that machine. And you'll notice that as I change those over on the right hand side, the cost to run that for an entire month and per hour is displayed. So as you're going through and creating a virtual machine, use this calculator as a way to sort of estimate what it's going to cost to run that machine if you were to keep it running 24 seven for an entire month. If I scroll down to the SQL server section here, you'll notice that the cost per month and per hour on those is slightly higher. And that is simply a function of the cost of the license for the SQL Server is included in that hourly cost. And I show this to you simply because I've seen some partners come in and spin up a, a D4 SQL Server Enterprise machine that costs over $4 an hour to run when really they need a D2 SQL Server standard for their testing or their demo, which will only cost $0.66 cents an hour to run. So be aware of the choices that you're making during the VM creation process which will impact the cost overall. The virtual machine that we configured earlier is up and running and I've actually logged into it with the remote desktop. So in the virtual machine, if I'm going to be gone overnight or for the weekend, I want to shut it down, I don't need it to be running and consuming my Azure credits. If this was a regular server, I would just come to the right, swipe in, choose settings, choose power, and then choose shutdown and click continue. So once I shut down Windows, it disconnected me from the remote desktop session as expected. But when I come into the virtual machines portal here, the status column still says that it's running. And that's because from an Azure perspective, it is. 
the platform is still running it's holding the IP address that's assigned to that virtual machine no different than if I had done just a quick restart we wouldn't want to lose that IP address or anything like that I actually want to come in here and choose the shutdown option I'm gonna choose yes that's gonna actually shut down the entire server not just the operating system that's when the credits are no longer being consumed and I share that simply because I've seen a lot of people come in, shut down the operating system, but they forget to actually turn the virtual machine off, which will continue to consume their credits. So making sure that the virtual machine itself, not just the operating system, is turned off will save you quite a bit in terms of credits. When you're ready to turn it back on, just click the Start button down on the bottom. One tip that I will share is if you are a PowerShell user, you can actually automate the shutdown and startup process of the virtual machine and the server all through scripting. So if you have multiple machines, you can shut them down, spin them up very quickly. So there's another thing that can impact how your credits are used in Azure, and that's geo redundancy. So let me start up a, a new storage account. I'll show you where that setting is. You'll see this setting in various places throughout Azure. Just be aware that when you turn on geo redundancy, you are going to have an impact on the number of credits you have. So if you want to or need to turn it on, please use it, but be aware of the impact that it has. So I'm going to click on the new button and I'm going to choose data services. I'm going to choose storage and quick create. And you'll see here at the bottom, there's a replication option currently set to geo redundant. If I was just going to create a storage account for something quick or something that wasn't a high priority, I could set it to locally redundant and that would save on the cost of having to replicate that to another data center. So there is a little bit of a cost savings that can be had anytime you see this replication option. Make sure you're choosing the one that meets your needs but doesn't overextend the cost if it's not necessary. So thanks for tuning in for this brief video blog. This is a part of the US Azure Partner Community. If you're not a part of that yet, check out the sign up links in the description for the video. You can sign up for our newsletter, our Yammer community, our monthly community calls, as well as be on the lookout for additional blog posts and video blog posts every month. Thanks and have a great day.